I thought the whole point of a garage sale was to sell stuff from a garage. Yeah, but they haven't got a garage, have they? Besides, it doesn't matter where you sell it. It's just a way of getting rid of all the useless things you don't need anymore. Which reminds me. <laughs> Very funny. Not bad for this time of day, is it? Why doesn't Professor Wilton sell all this stuff himself? Well, he's been called away suddenly to take up a post in Australia. Really? What's he do? He's an astronomer. Oh, he tells fortunes. No, oh, that's astrology. He's an astronomer. Studies stars and things. Very high up, according to my sources. Of course they're high up. That's why you need a rocket to get up to them. Anybody knows that. You don't get it, do you? I'll explain later. I'm just going to pop round the back of the house. What for? See if there's any more stuff round there. Oh. Oh, good morning. I was under the impression you were on your way out down under. Pardon? Australia. You are Wilting. Hey? Professor Wilting. Oh, I see. No, I, I, I'm from next door. I'm just keeping an eye on the place. Oh, I see. Very wise. You don't know who's going to turn up on your doorstep. Some very strange people around. Who are you? Chuckle house clearances. Motto, if you've got any junk, don't chuck it, chuckle it. We're here to handle the garage sale. Well, what are you doing here? I've just come to have a look, see if there's any more stuff around the back of you. Uh, you can't sell anything that's in there. It's to be left for the removal men, you know. Don't worry, I'm just having a look. Paul, Paul! He's in the shed. What's he doing in there? I don't know. I told him there was nothing in there to interest him. That'll be it, then. Hey, Barry, come have a look at this. Excuse me. Hey, what do you reckon? I reckon you should leave things alone. Do you know, I've always fancied one of these. Why? Why? So I can look at the stars. Really? Of course, I wouldn't expect a non-scientific brain like yours to understand the importance of astronomy. But it's only by looking at the stars that we get an insight into how the universe was formed. And once we've got an insight, what are we going to do with it? Keep it inside. I see. Do you subscribe to the Big Bang Theory? What makes you say that? How's that? There'll be a big bang in here in a minute. That's what I'm afraid of. It all looks very expensive. Look, if you don't like it, go outside. There's plenty to do out there. Right. That's fine by me. I'm keeping out of it. Right. Don't know what's wrong with him sometimes. A bit dark in here. Some comets are so bright, you can even see them in the daylight. Get away. It's true. If I find a comet, they'll name it after me and I'll be mentioned in the history books. They'll never name a comet after you. Yes, they will. Says so in here. If I find a comet, all I've got to do is ring this number and Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle what? They'll name it after me. What about Uncle Bob? He can find his own comet. Yeah, look, if you don't believe me, have a read. Oh, yeah. Can I have a go? Then they might name a comet after me, too. No, you can't. You haven't got a telescope. Well, couldn't I borrow that one? No, I'm using it. Well, after you, then. Maybe. But I'll probably be all day. I think that's it for today. I'll just check on the takings. We'll see what's happening round the back. Paul, well, what are you doing? I've been rushed off my feet. Are you still making a name for yourself? You don't seem to be having much luck. Can I have a go? Paul? 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 
typical. Hey, it's pitch black. is usually seen as a smudge. It leaves a trail of dust and ice particles as it travels through space. Paul, I think I've got one. Well, I hope you brought one for me. No, I think I've got a comet. Hey, let me have a look. Hey, it's true. Quick, get on the mobile phone to the Heavenly Bodies Association and tell them what I've done. What, fallen asleep? No, no, found a comet. You have found it. Yeah, but you're using my telescope. It's not yours, you borrowed it. Makes no difference. It does. Are you going to phone them or shall I do it yourself? I'll do it. Good. You'll find the phone number in there. Right. I think I'll go outside to phone because it'll be a better signal. Good idea. We don't want any bad connections spoiling my moment of glory. Association, I'd like to report the sighting of a new comet. My name? Oh, it's Chuckle. First name? It's Barry. You'll ring me back when it's been confirmed. Great. I heard that. You gave them your name. I didn't. They took it. That means they'll name the comet after you. Oh, dear. I never thought of that. You knew very well. Oh, what it is to be stabbed in the sheep's clothing by a snake in the wolf. You can just get on that phone and tell them the truth. I did. You didn't. Now, come here. Give me the phone. I'll no, phone it's me fine. Give it to me. Give it. I'll give it, it to me. Give it. Now, look what you've done. You're not going to do anything stupid, are you? No. It's the first time for everything. Paul, let me in. Go away. What are you doing? Mind your own business. You're not sulking, are you? <laughs> no. Discovered it. What's all the noise about? <laughs> Sorry about that. We're just having a slight altercation. An altercation, eh? What about? I've just found this new comet, you see. A new comet? That's right. And that's I... interesting. I'm head of news at the local radio station. Radio, rather? That's right. And I wonder if you'd mind me doing a small piece about it. Oh. I'm sure my listeners would love to hear that something as newsworthy as a new comet has been discovered right here in their own backyard. Uh, oh, it wasn't in the backyard, it was in the sky. Does this mean I'm going to get a mention on the radio? A mention? You may end up a household name. I'll just go and get my notepad. What for? Well, I, I need to take down your particulars. Steady. No, I mean I need some background details. Oh, I see. Uh, T? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Exciting, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Where'd I put the key? Oh dear, oh dear. Barry, I've been thinking and I've decided to let bygones be bygones and accept your offer. What offer's that then? Your offer to let me have the comet. Forget it. I'm going to be on the radio. Tell you what, I've got a better idea. Why don't you pop round to my house and we'll conduct the preliminary interview in comfort? OK, I will. Great. Tea? Take a seat. Thank 
very much. Are you going to interview me now? Uh, yes. I thought rather than make notes, I'd tape our conversation, sort of rehearsal for the real thing. Is that all right with you? Excellent. Uh, good. Now, I'll need some details. Uh, you are? That's right. Uh, I meant your name. Oh, Barry Chuckle. Good. I do try. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here with Mr Barry Chuckle, who claims to have discovered a new comet in our solar system, and he's kindly agreed to tell us more about his find. Mr Chuckle. That's me, although I've never been a mister before. Where exactly is this comet? Up there. Uh, yes, where exactly? Um, He's in the Orion constellation just to the right of the Crab Nebula. That's right. What do you mean, that's right? You've no idea where it is. I have now. Of course, it does have to be confirmed, but they do say it'll be named after me. This is fascinating stuff. I'm sure my listeners will be enthralled. Of course, I couldn't have done it without help. Oh, you had help? Oh, yes, I had a telescope. Right, I'll show you how to discover comets. What's up with him? He's just jealous. Anyway, about me. Uh, I was born and then I grew up and I went to school. Would you believe it? Right, let me see. Neptune is in the third quadrant and the solar plexus is ambivalent. So three megahertz at a high frequency should do it. Neptune is in the third quadrant. Oh, it was brilliant, Nat. We used to get all these presents at Christmas. And I used to get double the presents because it was my birthday on Christmas Eve. So I used to get loads. It was brilliant. What's he doing? Oh, he's just showing off. No, I'm not. For your information, I'm planning the next stage of my deep space exploration program. What's that, then? I'm building a radio telescope. Oh, well, perhaps I could interview you as well. I don't know about that. I'm a very busy man, you know. Oh, fair enough. I've got a couple of minutes to spare, though. Oh. Well, why don't you pop round? Good idea. Now, I'm here with Mr Paul Chuckle, who's also very involved in space exploration. I heard you say that you were building a radio telescope. That's right. None of that run-of-the-mill amateur rubbish for me. Yes, you see, I want to see things that have never before been seen. I want to go to places that people have never been before. Birkenhead? Birkenhead? No. Don't listen to him. He's just jealous of my scientific bent. Do you think your listeners would like to hear my life story? Well... Well, I think it all began when I was given a chemistry set for Christmas. Really? It was a wonderful set. It had all sorts of things in it. It had test tubes, glass bottles, a Bunsen burner. Mind you, a Bunsen burner's not much good if you've got no Bunsens to burn. Quite. As I was saying, I even remember my first experiment with that set. In fact, I remember my last experiment I did with the set. Same experiment. Pity about that shed, it was lovely. That wasn't my fault. Yes, it was. You blew it up. Yes, but you opened the door. Now, listen. Don't... This petty squabbling has gone far enough. You both ought to be ashamed of yourselves. In all my years of journalism, I've never seen anything like it. You have. I haven't. You, you have. have. I haven't. Haven't you? Yeah. Oh. Mm. I'll tell you what. It's not really like us. We don't normally argue like this, do we, Barry? No. He usually listens to everything I tell him. I don't know what's wrong with him today. Now, I'm going to telephone the radio station and tell them that I'm going to broadcast live from the actual location of the discovery. And I'll tell them to send a photographer around here so we can take some publicity shots. Photographer? Hey, Barry, we're going to get our pictures in the paper as well as on the radio. You can't have a picture on the radio. Then it'd be a television. Do you think we could have the picture on the front page with a headline, Over the Moon? Well, I'll see. But if this story turns out to be as big as I suspect, then you'll both be flashed all over the world. Hey, I don't know whether I fancy being flashed all over the world. Well, I do. You'll be on your way and we'll wait here for you. Rather than waiting here, you go back to your telescope and check that the comet is still visible. Well, it will all look silly and, and I'll be very annoyed if it's gone. I'll tell you what. We'll go and check where it's still there. Good idea. It's me! I'm going! To me! To me! Me first! No, it's my turn! Get off, it's me first! No, I'm going first! I'm going to look first! I'm looking first! Now look what you've done! You've moved the telescope! I hope we can find that comet again! Well, it's still there! Eh? Can't be! It is! It can't have moved that fast! Should have been up here. 
It's there as well. I don't understand this. Hey. It's there as well. Is it? Hey, you know what this means? We haven't only found the one comet, we've found three. Hey, hey, brilliant. We can have one each and one left over for Sundays. <laughs> on the lens. Oh, dear. Hello! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Quick, don't blame him. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm back. Open up. We're live on air in five minutes. And I've got the photographer with me. Just a minute. Hello? Oh, yes. What are we going to do? He wants to put us on air in five minutes. There's only one thing we can do if we want to save our reputations. Own up. No. We'll go round every telescope in the world and put a smudge on the lens. Good idea. Hang on, that'll take us ages. It's either that or end up looking like idiots. Too late. Hello. hello. Don't you hello me. I've just had a call from the Heavenly Bodies Association. Oh, yes. How are they? I'll tell you how they are. Puzzled. Hmm? They've checked out your reported sightings and they failed to spot anything where you said it was. Ah, uh, probably using inferior equipment. Inferior equipment? They're using the Hubble telescope. What's a Hubble? They suggest that I ask you to check whether there's anything on your telescope lens that shouldn't be. We can't tell a lie. We did actually find something on there, didn't we, Barry? Yes, we did. But it was only little and it did look like a comet. It did it indeed. It did. I suppose this means we're not going to be on the radio. It does. And I suppose we're not going to have our picture in the papers. On the contrary, I think it only fair that you do. Hey, I've got the world's press waiting for a picture of you two, and I think it only fair that you have your moment of fame. Great! Great. And I've got the perfect headline to go with it. Over the moon. Not quite. Still to do with the moon, though. I thought lunar... Scientists? No. Lunar... Explorers? No. Lunar... Discoverers? No. Lunar... Tips! <laughs> 